Welcome to the question series of ExamsNet. Students, you must have explored our website www.examsnet.com. This site is a great place for you to practice all the entrance exam question papers because these papers along with the detailed PDF solutions are available here. You may download our app. The link is available in the description box for a better box for the better preparation of your exam. Students, today I'll be solving J means 9 April 2024 shift two paper. In this video, I'll be solving the mathematical part of this paper. So let's start with the first question. Here we go. A very best of luck. It says, you have a, a limit so question that says x tends to 0 e minus 1 plus 2 x raised to power 1 by x divided by x is equal to. One thing this question can be solved in two ways. Uh, the very first thing you are having 1 plus e uh, 2 x raised to power this when I'm saying x approaches 0, so this terms will tend to infinity and this is equal to 0. So this term is something like 1 power infinity and you know that's equal to e. And uh, the left hand side that's equal to e minus e upon x is already this. So limit x approaching 0, this will tend to be 0 upon 0 form. The very famous L hospitals rule will come over here. So we'll be applying this rule. For that, again, you have to do one thing because you are having 1 plus 2x power 1 upon 2x. This is a function raised to part another function. So that means you have to consider the logarithm. You have to take the logarithms of it. So I think that will be a bit tough. So let's go for the easier version of it. I'll do what? I'll try and use the expansion of 1 plus 2x raised to part. 1 by 2x. So this is equal to 1 minus uh, 2x upon 2 plus this will be 11 into 2x squared which is 4x upon 24 so on it goes on. So now let's fill in this equation. You have limit x approaching 0. This will be the easier one to just fill in the shortcut for uh, uh, this 1 plus 2x raised to power 1 by 2x instead of going for the L of plus 2 because that will be a bit Bit complicated, uh, complicated. So this is uh, sorry, this is e minus one plus this raised to part this whole thing divided by x. That's equal to I'm using the expansion x approaches zero e minus sorry here was e e into one minus 2x upon 2 plus 11 into 4x squared upon 24. So, and uh, this is whole thing divided by x. Let's open up the brackets. You will have limit x tends to 0. e minus e plus e into x minus e into 11 upon 24 uh, into 4x squared. And this is upon x upon x upon x and so on. So this is equal to zero, limit x tends to zero, e and uh, minus e into this, or you will say like this, cut this. So you will have a six over here. Like this. So, so when x approaches infinity, this is e. That's it, the simple one, the very simple one, the very short one. If you know this formula, this is, uh, option a hope you got that let's move to the next question question number two consider the line l passing through these two points the distance of this point from the line l along this line is equal to so first thing you are having uh, the line which is passing through these two points this will be given by um i'm taking the point x this uh, one two three so this will be x minus one y minus two z minus three divided by because it is passing through these two points so the direction ratios will be given by two minus one that is equal to one three minus two one and uh, five minus three that is equal to two. let's say this is equal to some new so this equation any general point this is the line l right so any general point on the line l this will be given by mu plus 1 and uh, then mu plus 2, mu plus 2, mu plus 1. 
So this is any general point on the line L. So this is your line L. Let's say these are the two points and this is your line L, which is given by this equation. And this is any general point on this line. Mu plus 1, mu plus 2, 2 mu plus 3. Okay. Now, you want to have the distance of this point, which is along this line 3x minus 1. Let's rewrite this equation. Let's say this is line L1. So this is, I'm rewriting this equation so as to make the coefficient of x equal to 1. So this will be given by x minus 11 upon 3 divided by 2 upon 3. y minus 11 upon 3 divided by 1 upon 3. And uh, here is is equal to z minus 19 upon 3 divided by 2 upon 3. Let's say this is equal to some lambda. And this is your point. Have it as A, 11 by 3, 11 by 3, 19 by 3, and this is your line L1, which is along, the point A is along the line L1. Now, any general point on this line will be given by, general point on this line will be given by 2 by 3 lambda plus 11 by 3, lambda by 3 plus 11 by 3, 2 by 3 lambda plus 19 by 2. So, this is the any general point on uh, L1 and on L also line we have this general point for their point of intersection, right? So, for their point of intersection, let's say, so you will have the, these two equal, so that means mu plus 1, the direction ratios, this will be equal, mu plus 1 will be equal to 2 upon 3 lambda plus 11 upon 3 and mu plus 2 will be equal to lambda upon 3 plus this. Let's subtract both of them. You will have lambda plus 2 is equal to lambda upon 3 plus 11 by 3. Subtract, subtract and you will have minus 1 is equal to lambda upon 3 which gives you lambda is equal to minus 1. And now let's solve for mu. You had mu plus 2 was equal to lambda upon 3 plus 11 by 3. Uh, mu plus 2 is equal to minus 1 plus this or you have this as 2 by 3 or mu will be equal to, uh, this is sorry, minus 3, right? Minus 3 and this will be 8. So, mu will be equal to 8 by 3 minus 2 which will give you. 2 by 3. This is the value for mu and this is the value for lambda. So, the point on L for which lambda is equal to minus 3 and mu is equal to 2 by 3. Uh, that point was given by mu plus 1, mu plus 2 and 2 mu. It was 2 mu plus 3. Yes, it was 2 mu plus 3. So, this will be given by 5 by 3. Um, yes, this will be given by 5 by 3 and 8 by 3 and 4 by 3 plus 3. This will be 13 by 3. This is the general point on L. Now, you have to find out the distance. Let's say this is the point B and we just calculated the B point is given by 5 by 3, 8 by 3 and uh, 13 by 3. Okay, let's find out the AB now. So, this is, let's say, B and your A was 11, 11, 9. So, this becomes 11 by 3 minus 5 by 3 squared minus 8 by 3 squared minus this square. So, this will be 6 by 3 which is equal to 2 and the square is equal to 4 and uh, five, uh, this is 3. 3 by 3 that's equal to 1 and uh, this will give me 6 by 3, 4. Okay, so that's equal to 9 root which is equal to 3. So, the distance between both of them is equal to 3. We have first option as the answer. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question, number 3. So, this question says, let integral of 0 to x of this function is equal to this. When x lies between 0 and 3, y is greater than 0 and y of 0 is equal to 0. At x is equal to 2, y plus y plus 1 is equal to. So, this is something, I think, um, 
This is second derivative. Please recheck the question. This is supposed to be second derivative of y plus y x at plus, uh, uh, plus 1. You have to find out. So let's start with this integral. You have limits 0 to x root of 1 minus y dash of t square whole thing under the root dt is equal to 0 to x y of t into dt. Let's differentiate on both the sides. So you will get the uh, differentiating both sides. This will turn out to be root of 1 minus the derivative of uh, y for x because the upper limit was x and the lower limit was 0 because you have given y of 0 is equal to 0. So I'm not writing that. Okay. This is equal to y of x. Let's uh, do squaring on both the sides. This would be 1 minus uh, here was square. So 1 minus y of x square is equal to y square. I'm just writing it as y and uh, this will be equal to let's write it like this. 1 minus dy by dx. Now it's a bit easy to understand. Is equal to y square or you have dy upon dx whole square minus uh, this. Way. I'm taking it on this side. This is equal to 1. So let's differentiate both the sides. Again, this makes it 2. First of all, um, I'm writing it as y dash square y square is equal to 1. Okay. So this is equal to 2y dash into y double dash plus 2y dash is equal to 0. y into y dash. Okay. So let's divide both the sides by 2y dash. You will have y double dash plus y is equal to 0 or uh, y double dash plus y if I'm adding 1 on both sides. So this is equal to 1 and this is the answer. Answer option A. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number four. Let z be the complex number such that the real part of this is zero. Then the maximum value of this complex number is equal to what? So let's first of all say z is equal to x plus iota y. And let's say this is equal to n z minus 2 iota upon z plus 2 iota. So your n becomes x plus y minus 2 iota upon uh, x plus y plus 2 iota. Let's rationalize. So here you will have x minus y plus 2 iota divided by this same thing. So this gives you, see you are, I'm interested only in the real part because this is given to you as 0. So let's solve it. I'm considering, uh, okay, let's solve it first. So this will give you x squared and the, the real imaginary part I'm ignoring. Okay, and uh, this will give me minus minus plus y minus 2 into y plus 2. And the denominator will have as x squared plus y plus 2 whole square. This is equal to 0. See, again, I'm telling you, I have ignored the ignoring imaginary part. I have taken only the real part because in the question, you are given the real part is equal to 0. All right, that gives you x square. This is y square minus 4. That is equal to 0. So you have x square plus y square is equal to 4. Now let's come to what we have to find out. The maximum value of z minus 6 plus 8 iota. So modulus of this. This is something you have to find out. Okay. So this is less than equal to the modulus of z plus the modulus of minus 6 minus 8 iota. And uh, this was your modulus of z because z was equal to x plus iota y. So the modulus of z was equal to x squared plus y squared under the root. Okay. Under the root. So here this will be under the root. This will give me 4. So 4 root is 2. So this will give me a 2 plus 
Um, this is minus 6, 8 iota. This will be given by root of 36 plus 64 or this will be 10. That is equal to 12. So that means Z minus 6 plus 8 iota is less than equal to 12. Hence, the maximum value of this expression can be equal to 12. That gives you option A as the right answer. Hope you understood. Let's move to the next question. Question number 5. The area in square units of the region enclosed by this ellipse in the first quadrant below the line y is equal to x. So, if this is uh, the equation of the ellipse and this is your line y is equal to x, so... You want to have this area of the shaded portion. Let's make it. Let's find out. So first thing, let's rewrite the equation of the ellipse. This is x squared. 3 y squared is equal to 18. Let's get it to the general equation of the ellipse, which will be written like this. Okay. So let's find out. This is the line y is equal to x. And this is the equation of the ellipse. Let's find out the point of intersection. So for the point of intersection, x squared upon 18 x squared upon 6 is equal to 1. This will give me 18 as LCM. x squared 3 x squared is equal to 18. 4 x squared is, sorry, this is equal to 1. 4 x squared is equal to 18 or uh, x squared will be equal to 9 by 2, which will give me the value of x as root of 9 by 2, which is equal to 3 upon root 2. Okay, so this is the plus minus, right? Because I have evaluated the square. So x may be equal to plus 3 upon root 2 or x may be equal to minus 3 upon root 2. And because the line was y is equal to x, so corresponding value of y will also be same. y is equal to minus 3 upon root 2. So for this, this is your ellipse. And this is your line, right, which is passing through the origin. So, this is your line. This is the point 3 upon root 2. And uh, this is the corresponding value of y is uh, same, 3 upon root 2. And this is your point minus 3 upon root 2 upon uh, comma terms. See, in the question, you are told in the first quadrant, so I'll be taking only this part. I will not be taking this coordinate, okay? So, very much simple. Now, you just have to find out the equation and the area below this line. Let's see the required. Now, this is the one which you need to find out. This is the point 3 upon root 2, 3 upon root 2. Uh, this is your origin with the coordinate 0, comma 0 and this is your uh, 3 upon root 2 comma 0. So, this is your point, right? Required area will be given by required area will be given by area for that line that is 0 to 3 upon root 2 x dx plus the area taken by that ellipse because you have to take this area, right? This area also. So, it will be area for the ellipse which will be given by this ellipse from this point to this point. There is a, a small mistake. This point was 3 upon root 2 comma 0 and this point you have to uh, calculate when uh, you put y is equal to 0, x square is equal to 18 or x will be equal to uh, 3 root 2. So this point is root 2 comma 0. I'll rewrite this figure now over here. Just let me make it once more. So this was your ellipse. Okay. This is your ellipse and uh, this is your line. Okay. This point was 3 upon root 2 comma 3 upon root 2 and uh, Similarly, this point will be 3 upon root 2 comma 0. And on solving where the ellipse is touching the x-axis, this point is 3 root 2 comma 0. Okay. So, now you have to find out this area of the shaded region and this area. 
this area is given by y line y is equal to x from 0 because this was your origin to 3 upon root 2 comma 0 and also from this point to this point the area of the ellipse this will be given by the area as uh, 3 upon root 2 from 3 upon root 2 to 3 root 2 root of 18 minus x square upon root of 3 hope you understood it till here so this is the one dx let's rewrite this as required area as a from 0 to 3 divided by root 2 x dx plus the area from this to 3 root 2 18 minus x square upon 3 dx okay the first one is very easy this is given by x square upon 2 the limits are 0 to this and uh, this will be given by 1 by root 3 x by 2 root of 18 x by um, 2 18 minus x square plus 18 by 2 that is equal to 9 sine inverse x upon this. The limits were 3 by root 2 to 3 root 2. Okay, pay attention because uh, these things sometimes just a small mistake in writing will make the whole sum incorrect. Okay, so this will be given by 1 by 2 outside and here will be 9 by 2 minus 0 plus 1 by root 3. This is equal to 9 sine inverse 1 minus 3 upon this into 3 root 3 upon root 2 minus 9 sine inverse 1 by 2. So that's 9 by 4, 1 by root 3, 9 pi by 2, 9 root 3 by 4, 9 pi by 6. Okay, so that's 9 by 4 plus later. This will be 9 pi by 6, okay. So that's it's rewrite it 1 by root 3 outside minus uh, this and uh, it will be just let's solve it here 9 pi by 12 minus 9 pi by 6 so it will be 9 pi by 2 outside 1 minus 1 by 3 this is 9 pi by 2 into this which is equal to 3 pi so that gives you plus 3 pi okay and uh, here is, let's open up the brackets, 9 pi by 4 plus minus 9 by 4. And uh, this will be plus uh, root 3 pi. So this is the answer, root 3 pi, because these two will cancel. So root 3 of pi, let's check with the options, C or B option. Root 3 pi, this is the answer to the question. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number six, let the foci of the hyperbola coincide with the foci of uh, this ellipse. And the eccentricity of the hyperbola be the reciprocal of the centricity of this ellipse E. If the length of the transverse axis of the hyperbola is alpha, length of the conjugate axis is beta, what is 3 alpha square plus 2 beta square equal to? So here is your ellipse, which is x minus 1 square, y minus 1 square upon 100. 75 is equal to 1. So, the eccentricity of the ellipse is given by, let's see, e, e. This is given by 1 minus b square upon a square. This is already uh, in the standard form. So, this will be 1 minus b square, that is 75 upon a square, which is this. That will be 25 upon 100 under the root. That will be 1 by 2. Okay. Now, we got the eccentricity of the ellipse as 1 by 2. So, the eccentricity of the hyperbola will be equal to 2 because it is given in the question, hyperbola's eccentricity is reciprocal of the eccentricity of the ellipse. Now, transverse axis of the hyperbola is equal to 
alpha and uh, conjugate excess is equal to beta. Cochi of the ellipse is given by. One plus minus a e comma one. So this will be one plus minus a is a. Uh, let's see. It was uh, a is the root of hundred. That's equal to ten. And if we just calculate it, one by two. So that will be one minus plus minus uh, one plus minus five. So the two four five will be given by six and. 6 comma 1 and 4 comma 1 minus 4 comma 1. Okay. So, distance between the two foci of course this will be 10. Distance between the two foci because uh, you know this will be given by um, 6 plus 4 square plus 0. So, that will be 10. And uh, that means uh, distance is also given by 2 AE is equal to 10. From here, you get the value of A as 5 by 2. So, eccentricity for this hyperbola, this is given by this thing. Eccentricity is 2. So, 2 square is 4. 1 plus B square, I don't know. A is uh, A square is 25 by 4. And this will be equal to 4 is equal to 1 plus 4b square upon 25. Or you have 3 is equal to 4b square upon 25. 75 upon 4 is equal to b square. b will be equal to root of 75 upon 2. So, you got your alpha. Alpha was uh, the transpose axis of your uh, hyperbola. And that is equal to and beta is root of 75. That means the find was 3 alpha square to beta square. So 3 into 5 square plus 2 into this. This is 75 and 150. That's 2 to 5. This is the answer to the question 2 to 5. B option is the right answer. Hope you understood that. Let's move to the next question. Question number seven. Two vertices of the triangle ABC are given by this and this. And it's orthocentric at one and one. If the coordinates of the point C are alpha and beta, the center of the circle circumscribing the triangle PAB is H comma K. Then the value of alpha plus beta plus 2 H plus K is equal to. Here is your triangle. Let's say this is... Uh, Let's say this is A, which is having 3 minus 1 point, B, 2 comma 3. And let's say this is C, that's given by alpha and beta. This is your orthocenter because orthocenter is the point of intersection of the perpendiculars. So, this is the point P, 1 comma 1. This is the orthocenter of the triangle. Now, the slope of P, A. This is P, this is A. The slope of P, A will be given by minus 1, minus 1 upon 3 of minus 1, which will be equal to 1 only. Mm, minus 2. Yeah, uh, minus, sorry, minus 1 only. So, this is the slope of P, A. And this P, A is perpendicular on B, C. Right? P, A is perpendicular on B, C. Therefore, the slope of B, C will be given by, because they are perpendicular, this will be minus 1 slope of P, A. That will be equal to 1. Now, from there, the equation of BC, this can be framed as, uh, I'm taking this point, 2 comma 3. So, this will be given by y minus 3 is equal to 1 into x plus 2 or you have y is equal to x plus 5. This is the equation of BC. Now, similarly, let's pick up the second pair, which is your CA. I will frame the equation for CA. For that, the very first thing, the slope of BP, this is given by um, BP, that is equal to 3 minus 1 upon minus 2 minus 1, which is equal to 2 upon uh, 
minus 3, which is equal to minus 2 upon 3. And this VP is perpendicular to AC. So, slope of AC will be given by 1 minus 1 upon the slope of VP, BC, which will be equal to 3 by 2. So, the slope of AC is this. You already have the point A as 3, comma 1. Let's frame the equation of AC. This will be given by Y plus 1 is equal to 3 by 2 X minus 3. So, this is y plus 1 is equal to 3 by 2x minus 9 by 2 or uh, this would be 2y plus 2 is equal to 3x minus 9 or uh, you have 2y minus 3x plus 11 is equal to 0. And uh, let's say this is your second equation for AC and uh, this is your first equation for BC. Now, let's find out the point of intersection C that is alpha and beta for both of these lines. Okay. So, let's rewrite. You had equation of BC as y minus x minus 5 is equal to 0. And let's multiply both sides by 2. So, 2y minus 2x minus 10 is equal to 0. Similarly, you had equation of AC as 2y, 3x, 11 is equal to 0, minus, plus, minus. This will cancel and uh, you will have x is equal to, oh, give me a minute. This will be 21. Yes, x will be equal to 21 and you will solve the corresponding value of y. You will get y as 26. So, your C point, which was your alpha and beta that came out to be 21 and 26 that gives you alpha is equal to uh, 21 and beta is equal to 26 okay let's go on to find the h and k for h and k it has something else now it is saying you in the question that center of the circle circumscribing the triangle p a b is h k Wait. The coordinates of the point C are this and the center of the circle circumscribing the triangle PAB is H, comma K. Then you have to find out this value. So, center of the circle which is circumscribing this circle is this. So, that means this is the center of the circle. According to the question, you had these points. The three points. This was 21, 26. This point was... 3 minus 1 and this point is this and the center of the circle which is circumscribing is given by h comma k. So that means these distances are equal. If I take the first one, um, this is what the ortho center, ortho center was p11. So according to the question, according to the question, you have h minus 1 square, k minus 1 square. This is equal to h plus 2 let's take this one square and uh, this square similarly i'm taking the second point this is h minus 1 square k minus 1 square is equal to h minus 3 and k plus 1 square okay so let's solve it both of them mm. this will give me the value first one Okay, let's solve this one first. So, this will be h square 1 to h k square 1 minus 2 k. h square 9 minus 6 k k square 1 plus 2 k. k square h square. They are going to cancel. And uh, sorry, it was supposed to be h. This will give you 4 h. And this one will also go away. Wait, it was not supposed to be 1. It was, it should have been k squared plus. What I have done? Okay, okay, no, no, sorry. Fine, fine. It's right. This, um, I was thinking I have done this equation. Fine. So, this will give me 4h and uh, minus 2k. This will be minus 4k. And this will be minus 8 is equal to 0 or h plus k minus 2 is equal to 0. This is the first equation. And now let's solve this one. You have your h minus 1 square, k minus 1 square, h plus 2, k minus 3 is 
एच स्क्वायर वन माइनस टू एच के स्क्वायर वन माइनस टू के इज इक्वल टू एच स्क्वायर फोर फोर एच एंड के स्क्वायर नाइन सिक्स एच एच स्क्वायर के स्क्वायर वन कैंसिल एंड यू विल हैव माइनस सिक्स एच प्लस फोर के This is two, and this is thirteen. Right, so minus eleven, and this will be six h minus four k plus eleven is equal to zero. Uh, actually, and these I'm just multiply this with six, or I think better do with four. So multiply this with four. You will have four h four k minus eight is equal to zero. Six h Minus four k plus eleven is equal to zero. This will be ten h is equal to. Um, this is equal to three. Minus three. Ah, uh, there has been a mistake. This was four h minus four k minus this. So this was supposed to be a negative one, and this was a negative one. And uh, here for you will have a change. So this thing will be redone. This was four h. Minus four k minus eight is equal to zero. Six h minus four k plus eleven is equal to zero. So minus plus minus this will give me um, minus two h minus nineteen is equal to zero, or h will be equal to minus nineteen by two. And uh, similarly, you will solve. You will get the value of k as minus twenty three by two. So h and k you got, alpha and beta you got. What do you have to solve? You had to solve was alpha plus beta plus two h plus k. Alpha came out to be twenty one. Beta came out to be twenty six. H is minus nineteen by two, and this is minus twenty three by two. This is a uh, forty seven plus two of uh, this is forty two upon two minus and uh, forty seven minus of forty two. That's five. So the answer to the question is option C. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number eight. If the variance of the frequency distribution is hundred and sixty, then the value of uh, k belonging uh, to natural numbers is here in the question you are having C. So probably this is a mistake. Here should be C itself. So this is your frequency uh, distribution table. The x and f values are given to you. First of all, let's find out the mean of the data. That is x bar. So this will be given by two plus uh, two because I'm taking the c outside. Okay, so that's two plus one into two, two one into three, three plus four. Five and six. The C I have taken outside as the common one, and the number of terms are seven. So it will be divided by seven. This will give you a total twenty-two C by seven. This is the mean of the data. Now let's get to the variance of the data, which is given to you as one sixteen division. So here is your variance, uh, which is given to you as um, this will be given by summation x into x i. So C I am taking outside common, and uh, this will be two into one square, which is equal to two. Plus one into two square, which will be two square, one into three square, four square, five and six square. Whole thing divided by two minus the mean square. The mean was equal to this, so twenty two c by seven whole square. This will give you on solving uh, two and four nine sixteen twenty five thirty six upon seven. Into c square and uh, that's four eighty four upon forty nine c square. This gives me ninety two c square upon um, seven, right? And this is four eighty four upon forty nine c square. So let's take the LCM that is equal to one hundred sixty. It's given in the question. So forty nine ninety two six seven zero. This gives you six hundred forty-four minus four eighty-four c square common one sixty c square will be given by one hundred sixteen to forty-nine upon um one to forty-nine and the difference between the two this is equal to one hundred sixty 
I think uh, wait 644 and uh, 484 yes that's 49 and uh, C will give you the value as 7. So this is the answer to the question option D option C sorry. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 9 led to the range of this function fx is equal to this where x belongs to integers b. And there is something x belongs to this real numbers b a to b. If alpha and beta are respectively the am and the gm on a b then what is the alpha upon beta value equal to? So you have this function. Uh, if I see the value of uh, uh, here x belongs to the real numbers. So if I see sine 3x and cos 3x you know this lies between minus root 2 and 2 this is the range of it and uh, if i just add a 2 on this side so this will be 2 plus sine 3x sine 2 cos 3x this will belong to 2 minus root 2 and 2 plus 2 root 2 and 1 upon 2 plus sine 3x cos 3x this will belong to 1 upon 2 minus root 2 and 1 upon 2 plus root 2. All right. Hey, just a minute. Right. And uh, so this belongs to this limit. So that means this is your a and b if alpha and beta are the am and gm of a and b. So am that is your alpha is sum of the roots divided by 2 that is equal to 1 by 2 of this and uh, this will be given by 2 minus root 2 to plus root 2 and here will be this thing this whole is divided by 2 so this and this over here you're having 4 upon 2 and this will be 4 minus 2. This will cancel and you will have 1 as the value of alpha that is just sum of the roots. And b is the gm so that is equal to root of a and b and that is equal to root of 1 upon this 1 upon this value. So, this will give you root of 1 upon 4 minus 2 or this will be root of 1 upon 2. Right? And what you have to find out was alpha upon beta. Alpha was this and beta was uh, 1 upon root 2. So, this is 1 upon root 2. That means the answer to the question is root of 2. So, here you have the A option as the correct answer. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next. Question number 10 between the following two statements. This is the first statement. It says let A be this factor and B be this factor. Then the vector R which is satisfying A cross R is equal to A cross B vector and the dot product of A and R is equal to 0 is of the magnitude root of 10. So you are given two vectors. I will talk about the statement two later. First is the first statement. A vector is I to J 3 K minus. And uh, B is this vector. Also, you are given that the cross product of A and R is equal to the cross product of A and B. And the dot product of A and R is equal to 0. So, this can be written as uh, A cross R minus B is equal to 0. Or A vector can be written as some lambda into R minus B vector. Let's do the dot multiplication on both sides. So, a dot a vector will be given as lambda a dot r minus a dot b vector. What is a vector? So, a dot a, this will give you 1 plus 4 plus 9. That is equal to 14. So, this is equal to 14. Is equal to lambda a dot r is equal to 0 minus a dot b. So, the dot product of a and b, this will give you 1 plus 2 no sorry 2 plus 2 plus 3 that is equal to 7 so you will get the value of lambda as minus 2 so using this equation you now have the a vector as 
okay a vector is equal to minus 2 lambda not lambda it's r minus p vector or you have minus a upon 2 is equal to r vector minus p vector or you have a r vector as b vector minus a vector upon 2 or this gives you 2b minus a upon 2. Now what is your two, uh, 2 b vector? 2 b vector that is 4i 2j minus 2k minus of i 2j minus 3k upon 2. And this gives you 3i and k. This is your r vector. So the magnitude of r vector will be given by 1 by 2 outside root of 9 plus 1 or this half of root 10. But in the question, you are given that this is equal to root of 10 over here, the magnitude. That makes your first statement to be incorrect, right? Now, the second one, it says uh, if the triangle ABC cos 2A plus cos 2B plus cos 2C is equal is greater than or equal to 3 by 2. Okay, so let's move towards this now. The statement 2 says you that uh, you have to prove that cos 2a, 2b, 2c then equal to minus 3 by 2. So, you have OA vector plus OB plus OC vector. This is greater than or equal to 0. Let's say this is equation 1. And the magnitude of OA plus OB sorry not uh, plus this is these are equal magnitude of oa is equal to ob oc that is equal to let's say some r square let's say this is equation 2 so now using 2 you will have uh, let's take this and squaring so on squaring you will have oa square plus ob square O C square plus two O A O B O B O C O C O A. This is greater than or equal to zero. Or this is equal to three R square plus this will give me two R square cos two A cos two B. And cos 2c. This is greater than or equal to 0. So r will go away on both the sides, dividing both sides by r square, it will go away, and you will have a cos 2a plus cos 2b plus cos 2c is greater than or equal to minus 3 by 2. So this is the answer to the question minus 3 by 2. Yes, the statement 2 is correct. So that means statement 1 is incorrect, but the 2 is correct. Mm statement one is uh, the right answer is from your statement one is incorrect and statement two is correct option b is the right answer to the question hope you understood that let's move to the next question question number 11 limit x approaching pi by 2 this is uh, integral um, i'll rewrite this question properly this is Limit x approaching pi by 2 integral of x cube to pi by 2 whole cube. And uh, the numerator is having sine 2t power this cos t power this into dt whole thing x minus pi by 2 whole square. So this is uh, to solve the question. See, you are having the limits as one function and another one. So, I'll be using the Newton's Leibniz theorem. And what does that theorem say? Is you? It says uh, if you have to find out the limit or the derivative of an integral of the form like d by dx of some function to another function of uh, another function dt. Now, this is given by f of the upper limit into the derivative of the upper limit minus f of lower limit uh, which is this into the derivative of the lower limit. So using this let's solve this question this will be given by limit 
x approaching pi by 2. So here will be sine 2 into pi by 2 because the this cube root and this cube, they will cancel out each other into the derivative of pi by 2. That's a constant. So derivative will be 0 minus sine 2 x into the derivative of x cube which is 3x squared plus cos of t which is cos of pi by 2 into the derivative of it minus cos of x into the derivative of x cube whole thing is divided by x minus pi by 2 whole square and uh, okay sorry derivative of here as well so this is equal to this okay now, this is what? This is the, let's solve it properly. Let limit x approaching pi by 2. This is minus 3x squared sine 2x and 3x squared cos 2x and here is this. So, this is what? 0 upon 0 form. Limits for this. This is the 0 upon 0 form, okay, no, not the limits we have utilized, sorry. So, this is 0 upon 0 form. That means I'll be applying, here I applied Newton's Leibniz rule and now I am, because this is 0 upon 0 form, now let's apply L hospitals rule. So, that to, let's find out the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. This will be limit x approaching pi by 2 first function derivative of second so minus 6x into sine 2x minus uh, this will give me yeah this will be 6x squared because uh, 2 will be used from here and 3 will be used from here so minus 6x squared into cos 2x minus 6x cos x 3x squared into sine x divided by 2 only Let's use it. So now this will give me, um, let's put the limits. Okay. So that will give me 6 into pi squared by 4, 3 into pi squared by 4, whole thing divided by 2. This will give me 9 pi squared by 8. So this is the answer to the question 9 pi squared by 8, option A. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 12, the sum of the coefficient of x power 2 by 3 and x power minus 2 by 5 in the binomial expansion of this expression is equal to. So, the general term in the binomial expression tr plus 1, this is given by here n is equal to 9. So, this is 9cr into x minus x power minus 2 by 5 upon 2 power r and uh, x power 2 by 3 part 9 minus r. So, this will be 9 c r into 1 by 2 raised to power r and uh, combining the terms of for the powers of x, this is minus 2 by 5 r plus 9 minus r into 2 by 3. Okay. So, that makes it 9 c r into this and uh, this is x raised to power minus 2 by 5 r minus 18 by 3 minus 2 r by 3 right so now we want the coefficient two coefficients first of all uh, let's write it properly this is ncr one upon this this is x raised to power minus 6 and uh, Here is plus, right? This is plus. Okay. So x raised to power plus six and uh, minus sixteen r five fifteen. And now you know need to. This is nine c r one by two r into one by two bar r into six minus sixteen by fifteen r. Now you need two bars. You need uh, x bar two by three and x bar minus two by five. So for the coefficient of two bar x bar for coefficient of
x power 2 by 3, you have 6 minus 16r by 15. This should be equal to 2 by 3 or 90 minus 16r should be equal to this or r should be equal to 5. Now, for the coefficient of x power minus 2 by 5, 6 minus 16 r by 15 should be equal to minus 2 by 5 or uh, you should have 90 minus 16 r is equal to minus 6 or this will give you r is equal to 6. I got to do values for r. Now the sum of coefficients of both of these sum of coefficients of x bar 2 by 3 and x bar minus 2 by 5 this is equal to 9c5 into 1 by this 9c6 into 1 upon 2 power 6. Right. Let's take 1 by this outside and uh, this will give you 9 factorial, 5 factorial, 4 factorial and uh, this is plus 9 factorial, 6 factorial into 3 factorial into 1 by this is 1 upon this and uh, that's going to give you 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 9, 8, 7, 3, 2 into 1 by 2. Okay. So, these will cancel at 2 and this will cancel at 3. 4, 2 is 8. This and you will have here. This will be 1 upon 2 raised to the power 5 and uh, that's 42 into 3. So, this is 126 plus uh, 42. That's 168 upon 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. And uh, this will 4, 42 and this is 21. So, this is it. 21 by 4. This is the answer to the question. 21 by 4 option A stands to be the right answer. Hope you understood that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 13. Let B be this matrix and A be a 2 by 2 matrix such that A B inverse is equal to A inverse and B C B inverse is equal to A. C part 4 into alpha C square plus beta I is equal to 0 and 2 beta minus alpha is equal to what? So, okay. Here you have... Uh, many things let's say first of all you are given over here that a b, b is equal to this matrix and uh, a b inverse is equal to a inverse that means if from here you will have uh, a square into b is equal to uh, I didn't, uh sorry this is uh, give me a, a square is equal to b matrix right because uh, a into b inverse is equal to a so if i take it on this side and this side this will give me a square is equal to b matrix also you are given that to b c b inverse is equal to a this gives me c is equal to b inverse a into b or c power 4 is equal to b inverse a into b b inverse a into b this and this this will give me B inverse A power 4 into B and uh, B inverse B square because A square was equal to B into B. So, that gives you C power 4 is equal to B only. Okay. Um, B square. C power 4 is equal to B square. Also, C square is equal to B inverse into AB. B inverse into AB. This will give me B inverse into A square B or this is equal to this or C square will be equal to B only. Now, let's use the, what you had to find out was uh, this. Uh, okay, I don't have to find out. I'm given this is equal to this. C power 4 plus alpha c square beta i is equal to 0. This gives me b square alpha into b plus beta i is equal to 0. What is b square equal to? b was equal to this. So, this multiplied. This will give me uh, 1 plus 1, this plus 3, 4. 
18, 6 and 28. So let's fill in this equation. You will have, let's say that's equal to 1. So from 1, you have a 4, 18, 6 and 28 alpha 1, 3, 1, 5. Beta into the identity matrix that's equal to zero null matrix. All right, so this gives me four plus alpha plus beta is equal to zero. 18 plus three alpha is equal to zero. From here, you have alpha is minus six, and uh, we have put this value in this equation. You will have um, four minus six plus beta is equal to zero, or you will have the beta as two. two. Now you have to find out 2 beta minus alpha that gives me 4 plus 6 that is equal to 10. So this is the answer to the question option D. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 14. If the log of y to the base e is 3 sin inverse x then 1 minus x square y double dash minus x y dash at x is equal to 1 by 2 is equal to. So, you are having this uh, equation. Let's write it down. You have natural log of E is equal to 3 sine inverse X or uh, Y will be given by 3 power E power 3 sine inverse X. Taking the derivative Y dash, this will be E power 3 sine inverse X into the derivative of 3 sine inverse X, which is equal to this value. And... Let's rewrite it properly. You have uh, into y dash is equal to 3y. Again, differentiating. Here was like differentiating with respect to x. So, again, differentiating with respect to x. You will have a uh, first function into derivative of second and uh, Second function, this is minus 2x will come over here and this, like this and this will be 3y dash. Okay, so this will give you um, 1 minus x square into y double dash minus x y dash is equal to 3y dash into 1 minus x square whole under the root. Okay, so I'm what doing what I'm dividing, uh, uh, multiplying both sides by root of 1 minus x square. Okay, so this will give me 3y dash is into this is equal to 1 minus x square, second derivative minus this. Now you have to find out the value of 1 minus x square y double dash minus this. Let's rewrite this thing. Okay. Now you have to find out this value at x is equal to 1 by 2. So that means you have to find out this at x is equal to 1 by 2. So let's put over here x is equal to 1 by 2. This will give me uh, 3y dash. You have to find out root of this to find is this value at x is equal to 1 by 2. And uh, this will give me what was y dash equal to? It was 3 upon this. From here, let's say this is 1. So, using 1, you have a y dash is equal to 3y upon root of this into y dash into 1 minus this whole thing under the root. This and this will cancel. So, this will be 3y into y dash. And uh, what is the y? y was equal to? What is y equal to? It was e raised to power 3 sine inverse x. e raised to power 3 sine inverse this. 1 minus x square. I'll restarting the sum because there was some mistake. The y dash value, uh, let's use it from here. The y dash was equal to 3y upon this. Let's write it once here. Y dash was equal to 3y upon root of 1 minus x square and this is equal to 3 into, this is using 1, 1 minus x square 
and uh, multiplied by y, uh, y dash, which is 3y upon this value. Now, this and this will cancel. This will give me 9y. And what was the value of y? y was equal to this. Now, let's say this is 2. So, using 2. Using 2, you will have, uh, mm, what, what is it? Okay. So, it will be 9 into e power 3 sin inverse x and I'm going to put the value for x as 1 by 2. So, this will be 9 into e raised to power 3 sin inverse 1 by 2. That's 9 e 3. Uh, that is uh, going to give you pi by sin of 1 by 2. That's equal to pi by 4. Uh, sorry, pi by 6. So, this will be pi by 6 and 9e e raised to power pi by 2. This is the answer to the question 9e e raised to power pi by 2. You have D option as the right answer. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next video. Question number 15. The integral of limits 1 by 4 to 3 by 4 cos inverse 2 cot inverse this function dx is equal to. So, let's write down the integral. Okay. Let's write down the integral. This is uh, 1 by 4 3 by 4 cos of 2 cot inverse root of this. So, this can be written 1 by 4 to 3 by 4 cos of twice of tangent inverse 1 plus x 1 minus x dx um, right? So, cos of 2a, this again can be written as 1 by 4, 2, 3 by 4, 1 minus tangent square of tangent inverse 1 plus x upon 1 minus x under the root divided by 1 plus tangent, inverse, tangent square of tangent inverse of 1 plus x, 1 minus x, this whole thing into dx. So, 1 by 4 to 3, uh, 3 by 4, that is equal to 1 minus, uh, this will be 1 plus x, 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x into 1 minus x dx. This is 1 by 4, this is 3 by 4. So, on solving, you will have 1 minus x and uh, 1 minus x minus 1 minus x upon uh, 1 minus x 1 plus dx and uh, from here you will have the two cancellations and so uh, here is plus this and this will cancel here uh, this and this will cancel. So this will be 1 by 4 to 3 by 4 minus 2x upon 2 or this will be simply um, Yes, this will be minus x only because minus x up minus 2x upon 2, this will give you minus x only. So, this is equal to minus x squared by 2, 1 by 4, 3 by 4 or you will have y minus 1 by 2 outside. This is 9 by 16, minus 1 by 16, that is minus 1 by 2, 8 upon 16 or the answer to the question is minus 1 by 4. So, this is it. D option, correct answer. Hope you understood that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 17. If an unbiased dice is rolled thrice, three times, then the probability of getting a number in the ith roll, a uh, greater number in the ith roll, than the number obtained in the i minus 1th roll. That is the previous one. Roll where i is equal to 2, 3, uh, okay, is equal to. So, fine, got it. So, first of all, you are throwing the dice three times. First, second and third. And let the outcome of the first dice be A, B and C. First, second, third dice, the three times they are thrown away. Uh, so, the outcome is A, B and C. Now, you are given that the probability of the greater number in the ith roll than the previous one. So, that means you are given that A is smaller than B and B is smaller than C. So, how many favorable cases in this case? First of all, how many total cases? 
six dice, uh, six, like there are the six faces of the dices and they are thrown three times. So this is six power three, which is equal to 260. This is the total number of cases. And the favorable cases in which the three numbers, A, B, C, they are in this sequence that A is less than B is less than C. This will be given by 6C3. So, required probability will be given by 6C3 upon 216 or better to write it as a 6Q. This will be 6 factorial upon 3 factorial into 3 factorial into 6 cube. Or that will be uh, 6, 5, 4. Okay, 3 will be cancelled. So, 3 into 2 into 6 power 3. So, this will cancel this one. And uh, you have uh, 20 upon 6 into 6 into 6. Or uh, this will be 10 and 3. So, 5 upon 54. This is the right answer to the question, 5 upon 54. Option C, correct answer. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 16, let A, A, R, A, R square be an infinite GP. Submission from N is equal to 0 to infinity. A, R is to power N is equal to 57. And submission from N is equal to 0 to infinity. A cube R raised to power 3 N is equal to 9747. Seven. Then what is A plus 18 R equal to? So you have submission N is equal to 0 till infinity. A, R raised to power N. This is equal to 57. Um, this is the sum of infinite series. So, that means first term upon 1 minus r, that is equal to 57, right? Also, you are given submission from n is equal to 0 to infinity. A cube r raised to power 3 n is equal to 9, 7, 4, 7. So, that means first term upon the common difference, that is equal to r cube. 1 minus r cube is equal to 9, 7, 4, 7. Let's say this is 1 and 2 respectively. So, okay, let's uh, do the cube of it and dividing them. The cube of the first one and dividing them. That will give you A cube upon 1 minus R whole cube is equal to 57 cube divided by 1 cube 1 minus R cube and uh, this will be don't write is equal to over here. So, it will be 9747. A cube and A cube will cancel. So, you will have 1 minus R cube upon 1 minus R whole cube is equal to 57 cube 9747. And you will solve this. You will get the 19 over here. Okay. So, let's open it up. 1 minus R whole cube. This is uh, equal to 1 minus R 1 plus R. 1 plus r square and this is 1 that is equal to 19 and this and this will cancel at 2. So, let's do the cross multiplication. You have 1 r r square. This is 19 1 plus r square minus 2 r or 1 plus r plus r square 19 plus 19 r 38 r or you will have your 18 r square 39 r plus 18 is equal to 0. So, let us find the two numbers. The sum of the two numbers should be minus 39 and the product of the two numbers should be uh, 18 square. This will be the two terms will be 27 and 12. So, I am taking 9 common, 9R. This will give me 2R minus 3. And uh, 6 common, so here will be 2R minus 3. So, R is going to give me the two values as 3 by 2 or 2 by 3. Right? These are the two values which I get for R. See, uh, 3 by 2, this is uh, R is equal to 3 by 2. This is greater than 1. So, I will reject this value. I will pick up the value of R is equal to 2 by 3. So, in that case, you had A minus 1 by R as 57 or A will be equal to 1 minus 2 by 3 is equal to 57 or A will be equal to 57 into 1 by 3. 
that will give you a as 19. So what do you have to find out in the question? A plus 18 R to find a plus 18 R a was equal to 19 and uh, R was this. So the answer will be 31. 19 plus 12, that's equal to 31. D option, correct answer. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question number 19. Let alpha and beta, where alpha is greater than beta, be the roots for this equation. Let Pn is equal to alpha raised to power n minus beta raised to power n, where n belongs to natural numbers. Then what is the value for this expression? Let's uh, start. You are having equation x square minus root 2, x minus root 3 uh, is equal to 0. And you are given that the two roots for this are alpha and beta. In that case, you have alpha part n plus 2 minus root 2, alpha part n plus 1 minus root 3. Alpha part n is equal to 0. Also, beta part n plus 2 minus root 2, beta part n plus 1 minus root 3 beta power n is equal to 0. Let's subtract both of them. So you will have alpha n plus 2 beta n plus 2 root 2 alpha n plus 1 minus beta n plus 1 root 3 alpha and beta n is equal to 0. This is something. See, you are given Pn is equal to this. So, that means this is Pn plus 2 minus root 2 Pn plus 1 plus uh, uh, minus over here. Root 3 Pn is equal to 0. Now, let's put n is equal to 10. So, this will give me P12 minus root 2 P11 minus root 3 P10 is equal to 0. If I put n is equal to 9, you will have P11 minus root 2 P10 minus uh, root 3 P9 is equal to 0. Now, let's consider this expression. 11 root 3 minus this. Let's rewrite it. To solve was 11 root 3 minus 10 root 2 p10 plus 11 root 2 this minus 11 p12 is equal to 1. So that gives you 11 root 3 p10 10, 10 root 2 um, yes that will be p10 11 root 2 p 11 10 p 11 minus 11 p 12. Let's take 11 common from here. You will have root 3 p 10 root 2 p 11 minus p 12 minus 10 common from here root 2 p 10 minus p 11. And, uh, you know, this is equal to 0. See, from here, we have that this is equal to 0. That will give you 11 into 0 minus 10 into, uh, what is uh, this equal to? If I use this equation, then uh, P11 minus root 2 P10, that is equal to root 3 P9. So, this gives me minus 10 into minus root 3 P9. Or that is equal to 10 root 3 p9. Now, let's check with the options. I think this is the one 10 root 3 p9 option B. This is the right answer to the question. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next one. Question number 18 the value of this integral is equal to. To answer the question, let's rewrite this integral and uh, this time I'll be multiplying here with 1. Okay, now I'll be solving this problem using integration by parts. That will give me the first function, this into integral of second. The integral of 1 is equal to x and uh, minus of integral of the limits were this. Uh, derivative of the first, which gives you 1 upon 
x plus root of x square plus 1 and uh, the derivative of this this will give me 1 plus 1 upon 2 root x square plus 1 multiplied by 2 x is 2 and 2 will cancel and uh, this whole thing will be multiplied by the integral of the second dx and this will give me x will come over here log e x plus root of x square plus 1 integral of minus 1 to 2 this will give me root x square plus 1 plus x whole thing divided by root of x square plus 1 divided by x into this multiplied by x dx so this and this will cancel and uh, you will have this x natural log of e this minus integral minus 1 to 2 x upon root of x square plus 1 dx okay and uh, this will be x log e let's write this down and uh, minus this was uh, root of x square plus 1 divided by 1 by 2 also here is 1 by 2 into 2 uh, so this will give me into 2 over here right and the limits were same the limits for whole of this right minus 1 2 2 this will give me this uh, 2 and this 2 this will also cancel because this is divided by 1 by 2 and uh, yeah this is 1 by 2 over here so these two wait this is 1 by 2 and this and this will cancel you will have x log e x plus root of x square minus 1 minus this thing the limits minus 1 to 2 now let's put the limits you will have it as 2 log e 2 of uh, 2 square plus 5 that is equal to root 5 minus root 5 right and the second one is gonna give you uh, minus 1 right so this is minus of minus 1 into log of minus 1 plus root 2 and minus of log of root 2. Uh, sorry, there is no log over here. So, no log over here. And uh, this will be log e 2 plus root 5 whole square minus root 5. And this will be plus log root 2 minus 1 plus root 2. Okay. Yeah. Log 2. Here was e. 2 root 5 square minus this plus uh, yes this this is the one this is the answer to the question no we don't have anything like that in the option so we have to rework on that so this will give me let's combine these two so this will be log 2 plus root 5 square and uh, into root 2 minus 1 and here is minus root 5 plus root 2 so you can have root 2 minus root 5 plus log e i'm opening up the numerator this is 4 plus 5 plus 4 root 5 root 2 minus 1 and See, in the question, you are having something like in all of them, 1 plus root 2, 1 plus root 2. So, I think better what will I do? Multiply the numerator and the denominator by this. So, root 2 minus root 5 plus log of 9 plus 4 root 5 multiplied by a square minus b square upon this. Or this will be root 2 root 5 log of 13 plus root 5 upon root 2 plus 1 
This is the answer to the question. Now let's check which of the right, uh, which is the options is right. Root 2 minus root 5 up into this. Log of 13. 13 is not there. Wait, what mistake I have done? Sorry, here was 4 plus 5. That was, okay, okay. That was 9. Yeah, 9 plus root 5. Uh, 9 plus root 5. Or root 5, that is equal to this. Option B. So, this is the right answer to the question. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next one. Question number 20. Let A be given by this. B is this. C is this vector. Alpha and beta are the integers and the product of alpha and beta is equal to minus 6. Let the values of the ordered pair alpha, beta for which the area of the parallelogram with these diagonals is given by root of 21 upon 2 B. Alpha 1, beta 1 and alpha 2, beta 2. What is the value for this expression then? First thing. Area of the parallelogram whose diagonals are given to you is, so, area of parallelogram with diagonals uh, this and B plus C. This is given to you as half the cross product of the diagonals in the vector form. So, that is half A cross B, C and B cross C because B cross B is equal to 0. So, that gives you A cross B. Let's solve that. Okay, let's have solution for all of them. So, A cross B that is uh, equal to I, J and K, that's 2i alpha and 1 minus 1, 0 and 1. This will give you alpha and uh, I think this will be a bit lengthy process. So, skip that. I'll start from here. Skip this step as well because this will be a bit of lengthy. I'll directly solve a plus b cross b plus c. So, have a plus b first. A plus B. This will give you I alpha J and 2K. B plus C vector that will be minus I and beta J. So, the cross product of both of them. Now, this will be shorter one. So, this is the preferred one. This is I J K. And uh, 1 alpha and 2 minus 1, beta and 0. Okay. So, this will give you i into minus 2 beta, j into 2, k alpha plus beta. Okay. So, let's rewrite it. This is 2 beta i cap to j and alpha plus beta into k. Okay. And the magnitude of A cross B and uh, sorry, it was A plus B and this. That was the magnitude of A plus B cross B plus C that will be equal to 4 beta squared 4 and alpha plus beta whole square. Now, in the question, you are given that this is equal to root of 21 upon 2. Mm, yeah. So, that was, this was, let's use this. According to the question, area of parallelogram is root 21 upon 2. And that was equal to half of, see, this was the half of the magnitude of this vector. And uh, this is half of root of 4 beta square plus 4 plus alpha and beta whole square root of 21 upon 2. This 2 and 2 will cancel. Squaring both sides, you have 4 beta square, 4 alpha square, beta square, 2 alpha beta is equal to 21. Or uh, you will have alpha square plus 5 beta square 
and alpha and beta you are also given that alpha into beta is equal to minus 6 so that will give you minus 12 plus 4 minus 21 is equal to 0 alpha square 5 beta square is equal to 29 that's it so also you are given alpha square plus this and also alpha and beta is equal to minus 6 so you are also given alpha and beta are the integers let's solve this you will have beta is equal to minus 6 upon alpha or alpha square plus 5 into minus 6 upon okay this is square is equal to 29 or you have alpha power 4 and uh, this is 36 visor 3 and uh, 15 okay 180 So, you have alpha power 4 minus 29 alpha square 180 is equal to 0. You have 20 alpha square 9 alpha square 180 alpha square alpha square minus 20 minus 9. So, you have alpha as alpha square as 20 or alpha square as 9 that gives you alpha is equal to plus minus 3 or alpha is equal to root of plus minus 20 which is equal to this okay now you are given in the question that alpha and beta they are the integers so that means i will ignore this value and i will take the alpha value as 3 or alpha is equal to minus 3 so the corresponding value of beta will be minus 2 and here the corresponding value of beta will be equal to 2 so the two coordinates for alpha 1 beta 1 and alpha 2 beta 2 this will be equivalent to minus 3 comma 2 and 3 comma minus 2 now what you had to find out in the question was this alpha 1 whole square beta 1 whole square minus alpha 2 beta 2 to find alpha 1 beta 1 minus alpha 2 and beta 2 so that gives you 9 and uh, 4 and uh, that's 6 okay so 19 this is the answer to the question 19 option d this is the correct answer to the question. Hope you understood that. Let's move to the next. Question number 21. Consider the circle C, which is given by x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. So, this is the circle with the center at origin and radius 2. And the parabola, y squared is equal to 8x. So, here the value of a is equal to 2. If the set of all values of alpha for which the three chords of the circle C on the distinct lines passing through the point alpha comma 0 are bisected by the parabola p in the interval p comma q then what is 2 q minus p whole square equal to okay so first thing uh, when the chord with you are given the middle point let's draw the figure uh, to understand this if you are having uh, this as your circle and this is your parabola this is the center of the circle and uh, this is your point alpha comma 0 and this is the chord which is passing through this point and this is the middle point um a is value is equal to 2 this point lies on the parabola so this is given by you know 80 square comma 280 so this will be 4 uh no 280 square so 2 t this uh 80 square 280 so this is uh, this 2 t square comma 40 and this is the point alpha comma 0 and uh let's say this is x1 and y1 all right so equation chord with middle point is given to you is t is equal to x1 that makes it x into x1 y into y1 is equal to x1 square y1 square now this passes through alpha comma 0 so that makes it alpha into x1 plus 0 is equal to x1 square plus y1 square now this is the middle point of the chord so that makes it uh, alpha into 2 t square and uh, this is equal to 4 t power 4 plus 16 t power 2 right that makes it uh, 
Now let's do one thing. This is 2 alpha t square is equal to 4 t power 4 plus 16 t square. Or uh, you have alpha as dividing both sides by 2 t square. This will be given by alpha is equal to 2 t square plus 8. Or alpha minus 8 upon 2 is equal to t square. That uh, makes the alpha should be greater than uh, so alpha should be greater than 8. Right? That makes it here. Alpha should be greater than 0 because t square is there. So, alpha should be greater than 8. Now, the next thing. This this point, this uh, point 2t square comma 40, this is lying inside the circle. The equation of the circle was x squared plus y square is equal to 4. So, that means from here you have 2t square whole square plus 4t whole square minus 4 is less than 0 because this point is lying inside the circle. That will make the point as 4t power 4 plus 16t square minus 4 is less than 0. So, from here, dividing both sides by 2, you have t power 4 plus 4t square minus 1 is equal is less than equal to 0. So, the two factors for t square, it will be minus 4 plus minus b square minus 4ac. So, this is the one. 4ac this and here will be 2. And this will be minus of 4 plus minus 20. So, it will be 2 root 5 upon 2 or this will be minus 2, uh, minus 2 plus, uh, minus, <clears throat> plus minus root of 5, this, right. And uh, see, t is positive because, uh, so I will be taking only the positive value minus 2 plus root 5. Negative value of uh, root 5 like this negative will give me a negative value for t square. t square cannot be negative. So, that means uh, I'll have a positive value for root of 5. This is minus 2 plus root of 5. This is the value for t square. Okay. And what was your alpha over here? Alpha, um, you have t square as minus 2 plus root 5 and t square was alpha minus 8 upon 2 is equal to this or alpha minus 8 is equal to minus 4 plus this or you have alpha is equal to 4 plus 2 root 5. Okay, so that means alpha, we already told that alpha will be greater than 8 from here and uh, alpha will be equal to, sorry, not equal to, here was a sign of uh, less than, right? So, that means alpha will be less than this. So, alpha will belong to 8 and it is greater than 8 and less than this value. Right? That makes this as your P and this as your Q. You have to find 2Q minus P whole square. Uh, that comes out to be 2 into this minus uh, 8 whole square. That 8 and 8 will cancel. You will have a 4 root 5 square 16 into 5. 80 is the answer. So, answer to the question is 80. Hope you understood that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 24. The number of integers between 100 and 1000 having the sum of the digits equal to 14 is. So, you are having here, you want the numbers between 100 and 1000 such that the sum of their digits should be equal to 14. Let's say n is that number which is made by three digits a, b and c. Now, according to the question, you need to have that the sum of three digits should be equal to 14. Also, the first digit should be greater than or equal to 1 because you are going to start from 101 and you have to go till 999. So, a will be greater than or equal to 1 and b and c, they can belong to 0 to 9. Okay, b and c can go in this range. Now, there are uh, three cases. The first case says you all digits are same. Right? In that case, uh, a plus b plus c, that will be a plus a plus a or that can will give you 3a is equal to 14. That is not possible. So, that means not, uh, this is, no in no cases, like three digits, same digits will give you a sum as 14. That is no. Okay, a zero from here. Now, the second case, you have exactly two same digits. 
and one different. Okay, that makes 2a plus c is equal to 14, right? So, what are the possible pairs for a and c in this case? See, a will be 8, b will be, uh, sorry, a will be 3, b will be 3 and c will be 8. 3 plus c plus 8. Similarly, 4, 4, 6, 5, 5, 4, 6, 6, 2, 7, 7, 0. Okay. Now, this can be done. See, there are three places A, B, C. So, this will be done in three factorial upon two factorial ways. And uh, here will be, because there are five positions of it, this will give me, first of all, uh, three. Right. So, type three into five minus one, that is 14 ways. Correct. Now, the third case, when all the three are different, all three digits are different. So, that means you have all the three different A plus B plus C is equal to 14. So, they can be like A, B and C will belong to the first 950 941 931 860 and 653 right now how many combinations are such possible see first of all you cannot have a zero at the first place so a cannot this place cannot be a zero that means i have the eight possible pairs which can be arranged in three factorial ways, right? And these two pairs plus two into three factorial minus two factorial. That's it. It gives you three into six, like uh, this is 48 and this is eight, a total of 56. So total ways like uh, 14 from here and a zero from here plus 56 from here. Total ways or you can say total numbers is equal to 56 plus 14 that is equal to 70. This is the answer to the question. 70. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 23 for a differentiable function f of uh, this is real to real numbers. Suppose f dash x is given by this where a belong to the real numbers f of 0 is equal to 1 and the limit of x approaching minus infinity f of x is equal to 7 then what is this value equal to all right let's go hmm. okay so first thing you are having that f dash x is equal to 3 fx plus alpha or uh, you can write it as dy by dx is equal to 3 into y plus alpha or uh, dy about um, dy upon 3y plus alpha is equal to this. Now, differentiating both sides, you will have 1 by 3 natural log 3y plus alpha is equal to x plus c integrating both sides. That will give you, um, okay, 1 by 3 is equal to this or uh, x plus c is equal to 1 by 3 log of 3y plus c. You are given in the question y of f of 0 is equal to 1. f of 0 is equal to 1. That means x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. So, 0 plus c is equal to 1 by 3 and uh, this is 3 plus alpha. That makes C is equal to this. So, this expression now will be now what will 1 be? 1 by 3 log of 3y plus alpha is equal to x plus 1 by 3 log of 3 plus alpha. Let's take it on the left hand side. This will be 1 minus 3 log of 3 y minus alpha. I am going to take this down 
plus alpha and uh, that's equal to your x. So this will be log of 3y minus alpha upon 3 plus alpha is equal to 3x. Now taking e to the power on both sides, this will be 3y minus alpha upon 3 plus alpha. It was, wait, it was the plus alpha, not minus alpha. What did I write it? So this is equal to e part 3x or 3y plus alpha is equal to e part 3x into 3 plus alpha or y will be equal to e power 3x 3 plus alpha minus alpha into this. Right. Now, this is y. You can write it as fx also. Right. Correct. What do you have to find out in the question? Uh, no. You are given limit f of x uh, for x approaching minus infinity is equal to 7. So, limit This is equal to 7 and uh, that gives it uh, 1 by 3 limit x approaching minus infinity 1 by 3 3 plus alpha e power 3 x minus alpha. This is equal to 7 or that will be this uh, and uh, here will be this will come out to be because e power infinity that's going to give you 0. So, alpha becomes minus of 21. Okay. Um, now, what you have to find out uh, is about this. First of all, what will be your, you got the value of alpha, right? So, your uh, fx the function will be, it was uh, the function was this, 1 by 3. Let's write it down. 3 plus alpha, so 3 minus 21 into e power 3x minus of minus 21. It will be this, or this will be minus 18 e power 3x plus 21, or that will give you 7 minus 6 e raised to power 3x, fx. And according to the question, what do you have to find out? f of minus log 3. 1 by 3, no, that will be 7 minus e 6 into e power 3 into minus log of 3. And uh, this was 7, 6 e power minus log of 3 power 3, which is equal to 27. And uh, it will give you 7 minus 6. This will be e raised to power 27 power minus 1 or this will be 7, this 27 and uh, here will be 2, here will be 9. This is 7 minus 2 upon 9. What you had to find out was uh, 9 into f of this function. So, 9 of f of minus log 3 is equal to 9, 7 minus this 63 minus 2, 61. This is the answer. So, this is the answer to the question. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 22. Let the set of values of P for which fx is equal to P square minus 6P plus 8 sine square 2x minus cos square 2x plus this does not have any critical point B the interval A comma B then what is 16A comma B? 16AB uh, equal to. All right. fx is the P square minus this plus and sine square to x cos square to x 2 minus vx plus 7. So you will have fx as this will be p sine square minus cos square. This will give you minus cos square uh, cos 4x you know sine square uh, 2a minus cos square 2a, this will give you minus of cos 4a. So, p square 6p 8 plus 2 minus n into this plus 7. Now, it doesn't have a critical point. So, that means the derivative is not equal to 0. Let's find out the derivative of it. It will give you 4 sine 
फोर एक्स पी स्क्वायर सिक्स पी एट टू टू माइनस पी दिस इज नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो बिकॉज डजेंट हैव एनी क्रिटिकल पॉइंट सो दैट मेक्स इट टू इन टू टू माइनस पी प्लस माइनस फोर पी स्क्वायर एंड देन यू हैव फोर पी स्क्वायर सिक्स पी प्लस एट और दैट विल गिव यू माइनस फोर पी स्क्वायर ट्वेंटी फोर पी माइनस थर्टी टू फोर पी स्क्वायर ट्वेंटी फोर पी प्लस थर्टी टू प्लस आई एम ओपनिंग दिस ब्रैकेट फोर माइनस टू पी सो माइनस फोर पी स्क्वायर दिस इज ट्वेंटी टू पी माइनस ट्वेंटी एट एंड हियर विल बी फोर पी स्क्वायर ट्वेंटी सिक्स प्लस थर्टी सिक्स This will let's factorize. We will have p minus two minus four p plus fourteen p minus two four p minus eighteen. Let's take p minus two outside. So inside will be minus four p plus fourteen and this, right? So that means. P belongs to an interval like uh, it will be seven by two, and here will be nine by two. That makes your A and B. So your A is equal to seven by two, and B is equal to nine by two. You have to find out sixteen AB. So this is the one and four. This will give you two hundred and fifty-two. This is the answer. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number twenty-seven says the square of the distance of the image of the point six one five on this line from the origin is. So you have the point. Let's say this is P six one and five, and this is your line x minus one. Upon three, y upon two, z minus two upon four. Let's say this is equal to lambda. So the x coordinate over here, the point. Uh, mm, let's say the image. That's uh, let's say over here the point is q, and this is given by three lambda plus one, two lambda, and four lambda plus two. Okay. So what will be your p q equal to? P q vector and will be three. Lambda minus five, I, two lambda minus one J, four lambda minus three K, right. So because they are perpendicular to each other, that means this PQ line, this is perpendicular to this line. So the direction ratios for this line and this line, the dot product for them that will be equal to zero. So let's say this is the line L, dot product of O. Uh, Direction ratios of this line is equal to zero. So this gives me three lambda minus five into L was like three and uh, two lambda minus one, two, four lambda minus three into four is equal to zero, and uh, this will be nine lambda minus fifteen, four lambda minus two, sixteen lambda minus twelve is equal to zero, or uh, you will have twenty nine lambda. Yes, twenty nine lambda is equal to twenty nine, and you will have the value of lambda as one. So, what will be your point Q now? Your Q point will turn out to be four, two, and six. Right? Let's say P dash is mirror image of P. So now, okay, this is your P dash. So that four two six is the midpoint on P P dash, right? Uh, that makes it you had this P point was six one five, and this was your Q point, which came out to be four two six, and this is your point P dash. So what will be the coordinates for P dash? This will be given by um, four is equal to. Four is equal to six plus x upon two, and two is equal to one plus y upon two, 
and uh, 6 is equal to 5 plus z upon 2. That will give you x is equal to 2 and uh, 4, y is equal to 3 and uh, 12. 12 minus 5 where z is equal to 7. So the coordinates for this will be equal to 2, 3 and 7. Now what you have to find out in the question, the square of the distance of the image from the origin. So you have to find out this. Right, that is given by 2 minus 0 square, 3 minus 0 square, 7 minus 0 square, 4, 9 and 49. That is equal to 64, 62. This is the answer to the question, 62. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 26, uh, it says let A, B, C be three points on the parabola. Y square is equal to 6x. This is your parabola. Y square is equal to 6x. And... From here, you will have, if I compare it with the general equation 4ax, from here, you will have the a value as 3 by 2, right? And uh, next, let the line segment AB meet the line L through C parallel to the x-axis at the point B. Let's say this is the point A, which is uh, the coordinates for this are given by 2 uh, A, T1 square, 2 A, T1. And uh, let's say this is your point B, which is given by some 2 a to t2 whole square to a t2 and uh, this is touching uh, this is the line c which is parallel uh, to the x-axis and uh, it's this line a b this is touching this point at d right and further you are given that m and n respectively for the perpendicular from a so this is your point m and uh, this is your point n all right, so, all right, so here, let's say this point is some y is equal to 2a t3. Next, uh, what you have to find out is the product of am and bn divided by cd whole square. First of all, let's print the equation for uh, this uh, ab. And this line is, this point is... Uh, is c point over here this is a t 3 square and 2 a t 3 fine so let's frame the equation of a b for that let's find out the slope of a b i have got the a and b points so this will be given by 2 a t 2 minus 2 a t 1 divided by a t 2 square a this square so here you will have this and the denominator will have a this, right? And uh, after doing the cancellations, you will be left with 2 upon t1 plus t2. Here is the slope of ab. So now let's pick up any point uh, you want. So I'll pick up this point. Equation will be given by y minus 2 a t1 is equal to 2 upon t1 plus t2 multiplied by x minus a t1 whole square. This will give you y into t1 plus t2 minus 2 a t1 t1 plus t2 is equal to 2 x minus 2 a t1 square. Or y into t1 plus t2, this will be 2 x, this will cancel and you will have 2 a t1 t2. This is the equation of AB. Now, for the point D, you have y is equal to 283. So, x will be a into plus t2 t3 and here will be minus. I have already solved it. Okay. So, this will come out like this. You will fill the value of y is equal to 2a3 in this equation and you will get the corresponding value of x as a into t1 t3 plus t2 t3 minus t1 t2. So, what will be the length of c, uh, what will be the cd? This will be given by a into t1 t3 plus 2 t2 t3 minus this minus a t3 squared and a m will be given by 2 a t1 to a t3. Similarly, you will have b n as mod of 2 a t3 to a t2. 
let's find out you have to find out the dot uh, the product of a m b n upon c d square so doing this multiplying and dividing you will have 4 a square t1 minus t3 t3 minus t2 divided by a t1 t3 t2 t3 t1 t3 minus t3 whole square right so that will give you 4 a square t1 minus t3 t3 minus e2 divided by a of and factorizing this so this will be t1 minus t3 t2 minus t3 or uh, they will cancel this will be minus outside minus this and this will also cancel 4 a square or this will be 16 a square we already calculated in the starting a was equal to 3 by 2 so that gives you 36 as the answer we saw that a was equal to 3 by 2 so answer to the question is 36 hope you got that let's move to the next question question number 25 let a be given by the uh, set x y such that uh, 2 x plus 3 y is equal to 23 x y belongs to the natural numbers b is a set x can that contains x such that x y belongs to a then the number of one to one functions from a to b is so given here condition is 2x plus 3y is equal to 24 if i take x is equal to 1 you will get the correspondingly y value as 7 if i take x is equal to 4 y will be 5 x is equal to 7 then um, y will be equal to 3 and if i take x as 10 y will be equal to 1 Okay, so that means A will have the ordered pairs as 1, 7, 4, 5, 7, 3, 10 and 1. And from here, X and Y belong to A. So, this will be 1, 4, 7 and 10. Therefore, the number of 1 to 1 functions from A to B will be given by 4 factorial. That's it. 4 factorial or you can solve it that is 4 into 3 into 2 that will be 24. Wait. 24 is the right answer to the question. Hope you understood that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 28. If 1 upon alpha plus 1 plus 1 upon alpha plus 2 till 1 upon alpha plus uh, this is 2, 0, 1, 2 minus this whole expression is equal to 1 upon 2024 then what is alpha equal to? Let's rewrite it. This can be written as 1 upon alpha plus 1. This and so on. Alpha plus 2012. A minus of 1 upon 2 into 1. This can be written as 1 upon 1 upon uh, minus 1 upon 2. Plus this can be written as 1 upon 3 minus 1 upon 4. So on. This will be 1 upon 2023 minus 1 upon 2024 now this is given in the question that this is equal to 2024 right let's rewrite this will be 1 upon alpha plus 1 1 upon alpha plus 2 1 upon alpha plus 2012 minus 1 upon 1 1 upon 2 and uh, this is 1 upon 3 1 upon 4, so on, 1 upon 2023. And this is uh, then minus this and then a minus of 2 into this. Because I have uh, subtracted this 1 by 2, right? So I have to add it now. 1 by 2, 1 by 4 and so on till this. This whole thing is equal to 1 upon 2024 so, or uh, this is equal to 1 upon alpha plus 1 and uh, this till 1 upon alpha plus 2012 minus 1 upon 1 plus 1 upon 2 till 1 upon 2023 plus 1 upon 2024 right and uh, then it will be plus of 
1, 1 by 2, so on till 1 upon 1, 0, 1, 1. This whole thing is equal to 1 upon 2024. Or this will be 1 upon this, 1 upon this, this, and 1 upon 2012. This is equal to and uh, this and this will cancel. Right? Yeah. So this is equal to 1 upon 1012 because uh, this is in the plus and this is in the minus. From here you will subtract 1 up till 1 upon 1011. I'll start from 1012. 1 upon 1012 from here. This will be 1 upon 1012. 1 upon 1013 and it will go upon 1 upon 1023. So that makes, uh, see from here you will get uh, this is equal to this. That gives you alpha is equal to or alpha plus 1 is equal to this. That gives you alpha is equal to 1011. This is the answer to the question. 1011, this is the answer. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 29, let the inverse trigonometric functions take principal values, the number of real solutions of the equation 2 sin inverse x plus 3 cos inverse x is equal to 2 by 5, 2 pi by 5 is equal to. So you have 2 sin inverse x and uh, I will write it as 2 cos inverse x plus cos inverse x is equal to this. This is equal to pi. This will give you 2 into pi by 2. That is equal to pi. So that's equal to this value cos inverse x from here will be equal to minus pi so this will be minus 3 pi by 5 right that is not possible cos inverse x cannot have this value so the answer is 0 or you can say not possible hope you understood that let's move to the last question of this paper so question number 30 says, consider the matrices A as this, B, X. Let the set for all M for which the system of equations AX is equal to B has a negative solution that is X is negative, Y is negative in the interval A comma B. Then 8 into integral limits A to B, A, um, this is determinant of A, okay. And uh, uh, DM is equal to, fine. I'll start with your given in the question that uh, A x is equal to b. So, that will give you a x is equal to b. So, let's multiply that. 2 minus 5 3m and uh, this is equal to 20. That will give you 2x minus 5y is equal to 20. Also, 3x plus my is equal to m. Okay, and uh, fine. So, let's take the value of x from here and fill in this equation. So, from here, x is equal to 20 plus 5y upon 2. Now, this will be 3 into 20 plus 5y upon 2 plus my is equal to m or uh, you will have here 30, 15 by 2y my is equal to m or you will have y 15 by 2 plus m is equal to m minus 30. y is equal to m minus 30 upon 15 by 2 plus m. Now you are given in the question that y is negative, y is less than 0. That means here m will lie in the, in, in the interval of minus 15 by 2 to 30. Okay, now similarly, you also have, let's fill in the value of y. So, you will have 3x plus m into 2x minus 20 upon 5 is equal to m or 3x to mx upon 5 upon, uh, this will be 20 upon 5 into m or uh, this will be 4m is equal to m. 3x, let's do the LCM also. This will be 15x. 2mx upon 5 is equal to 5m or you will have x as 25m divided by 
15 plus 2m. Now x is also negative. So that means here m will have the interval will lie between this interval minus 15 by 2 to 0. Therefore, if I combine this one and uh, here it is this one. If I combine both of them, here was round brackets. So therefore, m will belong to minus 15 by 2 to 0. So that makes your a and this makes your b. Now, to find was 8 limits a to b. So minus 15 by 2 to 0. And uh, what was next is uh, determinant of a. Let's find out the determinant of a as well. So over here, a's determinant will be given by 2m plus 15. Right, this determinant. So this is 2m plus 15 dm. That will give you um, 8 outside and this will be 2m square by 2 plus 15m. The limits are this to this and uh, this will give me 8m square 15m minus 15 by 2, 2 0 or uh, that's 8 and uh, this is 2 to 5 upon, no sorry, that will be first of all 0 and 0 then minus of 2 to 5 upon 4 and uh, this will be minus 2 to 5 upon 4. Okay, and this is equal to 8 into minus outside or uh, you will say this as a 2 to 5 upon 2 minus 2 to 5 upon 4 and I will take the 2 to 5 upon 2 outside this will be 8 into 2 to 5 upon 2 I have taken outside this is 1 minus 1 by 2 so this is 4 4 into 2 to 5 into 1 by 2 this will also cancel and uh, you will have 450 this is the answer to the question 450 so students with that we have completed all the 30 questions of this paper hope you understood them well and don't forget to visit our website www.examsnet.com. This site is a great place for you to practice all the entrance exam question papers because these papers along with the PDF solutions are available here for free. You may also download our app. The link is available in the description box for a better preparation of your exam. So students keep shining, keep rising high. That's all for this paper. A very best of luck for your exams.